Our reading this morning is taken from Acts 1, verses 3 to 8, and then Acts 2, 1 to 8, and it's going to come up on the screens. After his suffering, Jesus presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Today is Pentecost Sunday, and I want to talk to you about how to be a world changer for Jesus. The Urban Dictionary defines a world changer as a person who has a deep inner desire to make the world a better place. And this person is able to change impulse to action, to see change become a reality, no matter how small. What if I told you that every single person sitting in this room today and watching online can be a world changer for Jesus? Today, Jesus can transform you by the power of his Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that was poured out 2,000 years ago at Pentecost over the people that God called is available to us today. This small group of people that we've just read about in Acts, they were frightened, they were confused, and they were mostly uneducated men and women. They were ordinary people living in times of uncertainty and challenge. You know, they weren't some kind of elite group of people like the UK Special Forces or the Navy SEALs. This small group of people had been chosen by Jesus, and they went on to become world changers for Jesus. They became a force to be reckoned with in the known world. They went on to transform society. How did they do that? How did they do that? Well, I think the first thing they did was they listened to Jesus and they received the gift. Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. In a few days, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I have a niece called Leah, who is six years old. And um, she goes to school in West London, and I work in South Kensington. And two weeks ago, my sister sent me a message and said, hey, guess what? Leah is going on a school trip to the Natural History Museum. And um, the Natural History Museum is in South Kensington, where I work. So I opened my Outlook, and I looked at my diary, and from 10 to 11, I had a meeting, from 11 to 12, I had a meeting, and from 12 to 1, I had a meeting. But as soon as it hit one o'clock, I thought to myself, I'm gonna go 
to the Natural History Museum and I'm gonna find Leah. And so I, I walked to the Natural History Museum and actually the thought that I might miss Leah, the thought that I might get there and she wouldn't be there, just started to make me feel extremely devastated. So basically I started running to the Natural History Museum. And I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's pretty large. And I got into the museum and I was like, right, I need to find Leah. But thankfully, my brother-in-law, Simon, was one of those parents who volunteers to take the entire school group to the museum. I mean, those people are pretty much saints in my book. So I messaged my brother-in-law and I said, Simon, where are you and where is Leah? And he messaged back and he said, we're in the dinosaur bit in the one-way system. Um, and so if you meet us by the exit, you can find us there. So I found the dinosaur bit and I stood by the exit of the one-way system. And as I was waiting, I just couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to see Leah. And um, I just became a bit impatient. So I just started to go into the exit against the one-way system. And I turned a left, and there was a group of 30 children in high-vis jackets. And I, I was looking for Leah, and then I saw her, and I said, hi, Leah. And um, she saw me. And she just walked over to me and she held my hand. And um, just so you know, um, the teachers were definitely there. But thankfully, because my brother-in-law was there, she's like, don't worry, everyone. She's not a random person. Um, she's family. She works in the area and she's just come to visit. But uh, basically, for the next hour, Leah held my hand and we walked through the Natural History Museum. And um, Leah would just turn to me and say, what is that? And I'd say, oh, I think that's a woolly mammoth. And she would say, what is that? And I was like, oh, that's the big blue whale. And she was like, what is that? And I'd say, uh, I think that's some creature that's extinct. I just started making it up. But as we were walking <laughs> through the Natural History, History Museum, we walked past a gift shop. And I said, Leah, let Ima, which is the Chinese word for auntie, let Ima buy you a gift. And I said, do, would you want a dinosaur toy? Do you want a pencil? Do you want a notebook? What do you want? Ima will buy it for you. And um, I said to Sai, I said, Sai, we need to go to the gift shop. And she, it, Sai's just said to me, we have no time to go to the gift shop. We're on a very tight schedule and we need to walk back to Gloucester Road so that we can get the kids all back to school. And so I was like, oh, I was like, oh, no time for the gift shop. But as we were walking to Gloucester Road tube station and she held my hand the whole time, she just turned to me and she said, um, are you going to come back to school with me? And I said, oh, Leah, I wish I could, but I've got to go back to work. And as we parted ways at Gloucester Road Tube Station, I said, bye, Leah, I love you, I love you. And I kept saying it to her as she was going to catch the tube. And um, as I was walking home from Gloucester Road back to work, I felt God say to me, do you know that's how I feel about you. Do you know every day that I just want you to come and be with me and hold my hand? Do you know that I want you to bring all your questions? What is that? What is that? What does that mean? I just want you to tell me. And do you know that I withhold no good thing from you because I love you? I withhold no good thing from you because I love you. You know, Leah knows that I love her. I tell her every single day. You know, the fact that um, I love her and she knows that is one thing. But when I'm with her, when I get to hold her hand, when I get to buy her the dinosaur toy, she experiences my love in a totally different way. Objectively and legally, my love for her hasn't changed, even when I'm not with her. Even when I'm not with her, I love her. But when we're together, she experiences my love and she knows that it is real. And in a way, that is what the Holy Spirit, that is what the gift of the Holy Spirit does. It makes God's love to us a tangible reality, which we can experience today. God loves us no matter how we feel, and his love for us never changes. We will never be abandoned, and we will never be unloved by the Father because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. 
And when you experience this love which the Holy Spirit makes a reality, what that gives you is courage and it makes you fearless. And courage and fearlessness is what enables you to be a world changer for Jesus. After the apostles listened to Jesus and received the gift, they had to let go of their own plans, preconceptions, and their own power. In Acts 1 to 6, it says that they, the apostles, gathered around Jesus and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And I find this verse so encouraging because the apostles had been with Jesus. They'd been chosen by Jesus. They'd eaten with Jesus. They'd listened to Jesus. And yet they still misunderstood what Jesus had come to do. And for some reason, that just reassures me because sometimes I think I just don't know what God is doing. I know that many times in the pandemic, I had no idea what God was doing. But knowing that the apostles got it wrong sometimes makes me feel that little bit better. When Jesus speaks of the kingdom of God, the apostles saw that Jesus was gonna bring about an earthly political kingdom for the people of Israel. The apostles were dreaming of an earthly political dominion. They wanted Israel to be freed from the oppression and rule of Rome. They were still thinking about power in terms of earthly systems and earthly kingdoms. But the power in the kingdom of God is totally different to earthly power. The power of the Holy Spirit is totally different to earthly power. The apostles came to Jesus with their own plans, with their own preconceptions of what they wanted God to do. And Jesus had other ideas in mind. Jesus has his own plans and purposes. And Jesus sends us the Holy Spirit to empower us for his plans and his purposes, to witness, to mission, and to service. Sometimes I think I have a lot of my own plans that I bring to God and I want God to do the things that I want him to do. But sometimes we have to let go of our own plans, our own preconceptions of God, and even our own power so that God can come and do something new. Sometimes we have to let go of what is comfortable and familiar to be a world changer for Jesus. Don't box God in. Let God surprise you. You know, exactly 40 years ago, in June 1982, John Wimber came to HTB for two days. I wasn't here at the time because I was only two months old. But what happened was um, John Wimber was a musician, an evangelist, a church planter from California. And he came to HTB and there was a very small group of people, maybe 70 to 80 people, who met downstairs in the spring here at HTB. And when John Wimber arrived, he did a short talk on healing, and then there was a coffee break, and he said, and after the coffee break, I'm going to do some healing. And at that time at HTB, I don't think anyone knew what that meant. No one knew what that meant. But I think the team had to let go of their plans and even their preconceptions of God because they had to be open to God doing a new thing. And when John Wimber met with that group of 70 to 80 people in the room, he and his team had a list of prophetic words of knowledge. And what they said was um, they felt that there was someone in the room who was struggling to conceive and couldn't have a a baby. And this was 1982. So to talk about struggling to have a baby was something that just was so taboo. Actually, even in 2022, I think it's still hard to talk about battles that we fight in private. But after that prophetic word was given and a very long silence, a young 25-year-old woman came to the front of the room. And with tears in her eyes, I think she said, I think that's for me. And John Wimber laid a hand on her 
and prayed, come Holy Spirit, and asked for healing in the name of Jesus. And nine months later, this woman gave birth to a very healthy baby boy. And in the room in the spring that night was Nikki Gumbel. And I think Nikki went home that night and he was a little bit skeptical, but he wasn't skeptical enough to stop coming for day two. So on day two, the next day, 250 people gathered in Church House, which is the building across the car park here at Brompton Road. And again, John Wimber and his team had some prophetic words of knowledge for the people in the room. And um, there was a prophetic word that there were 10 people in the room who had athlete's foot. And nine people put up their hands to respond to it, but there was a 10th person that they were waiting for. And I think Nikki knew um, that that was him. <laughs> and I think Pips must have elbowed him in the ribs to tell him to step forward. Anyhow, reluctantly, Nikki came forward and a member of the team said, can I pray for your athlete's foot? And Nikki, in a very polite British way, said, no, thank you. I, you don't need to pray for my athlete's foot. Um, but would you pray that I might experience the power of the Holy Spirit? And as they prayed for Nikki, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And I think he describes it as like thousands of volts of power began to course through his body. And as that happened, it started to get a little bit noisy. And it was, it was so noisy that they, they had to carry him out of the building. And as they carried him out, John Wimber just said, don't worry, that man is being the, given the gift of evangelism. And 40 years later, there is no other way to explain what has happened here at HTB without the power of the Holy Spirit. Alpha, which was birthed here at HTB, has now reached millions of people all around the world as a tool for evangelism. It has been translated into 112 languages. You know, what sometimes feels impossible is totally possible with Jesus. Let go of your own plans, your own preconceptions of God, and even your own power, and let God give you a new vision and purpose for your life. The apostles listened to Jesus and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. They let go of their own plans and purposes and their own power. And then they chose to live every day enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2 verses 4 to 7 we read, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each one of us hears them in our own native language? You know, Pentecost is the reversal of what happened at the Tower of Babel. What happened at Pentecost was there was a power and a unity that reversed the division and the scattering that happened at the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament when people were trying to build their own kingdoms and amass their own power without God. But Jesus tells his followers that I want you to be witnesses to the ends of the earth and then Jesus sends his spirit and enables them to speak in different languages. You know, if God is calling you, he will equip you. That is a promise you can bank on. One of the marks of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that you become obsessed with the gospel. You cannot stop talking about what Jesus has done in your life. And at Pentecost, the gospel was preached in every known language at that time. Not only that, it happened at exactly the same time. All of the languages were spoken at exactly the same time. And this tells us something that is very important. The fact that God chose to do this deliberate miracle tells us that no language or culture has any precedence over any other language or culture. Christianity is the most 
culturally diverse faith on the earth. There is no one culture that is the right culture. There is no one language that is the right language. All of the cultures and languages are included in God's kingdom. Every tribe, every tongue, and every nation is invited and represented because Jesus loves all people. Jesus loves all languages and Jesus loves all cultures. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for the world. And it has been proven that churches who lift up the power of the Holy Spirit in their theology are some of the most multiracial, multi-ethnic and multicultural churches in our world today. I love it. What could unify all these people apart from Jesus? Only Jesus. What does it mean to be enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit every day? What does that look like? Well, the person in my life who first showed this to me was my grandma. When I was very young, probably around six or seven years old, my grandma would fly from Hong Kong to London and she would stay with us for six months. And that would happen once every few years. And my grandma, when she came to stay, would share a room with me. And every morning, my grandma would wake up at 5 a.m. and start praying in tongues. And as a young child, I was like, what is that sound? Because I, I don't understand. It just sounds like lots of sounds. But she would pray in tongues. And then she would start singing. And then she would start weeping. And sometimes she would just cry out, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then she would get out her Chinese Bible with her red biro, and she would start circling the words of Jesus. Now, if someone prays in tongues every day for six months at 5 a.m. in the morning, you start to become vaguely familiar with some of the sounds. But basically, after my grandma went back to Hong Kong, I didn't hear anyone else speak in tongues. In fact, when I went to church, no one at church spoke in tongues either. I was just taught that the way God speaks to you is you read your Bible and you pray. So be a good Christian, read your Bible and pray. And that's what I just believed. I was like, oh, God speaks to us when we read our Bible and we pray. And I'm not saying that God doesn't speak to us when we read our Bibles and we pray. Everyone should read their Bible and they should pray. But once every so often, someone would come and talk to me about their experience of the Holy Spirit. And I'd be like, oh, I would just nod. And maybe there was a tiny bit of me that was curious, but mostly I was quite skeptical. And I would say, oh, that's like, wow, that's great for you. Um, but it's probably not the way that God speaks to me. So um, I'm really happy for you, but it's probably not for me. It's probably not for me. And then three years ago, in 2019, I went to Focus before the pandemic. And actually, that was the last time that we gathered as a network of churches together. And I had one job at Focus. My job at Focus was to look after one of our speakers from overseas called Alex Seeley. And so at Focus, my job was to drive Alex from point A to point B. I had to take Alex to the big top. I had to make sure she was okay. I had to make sure she had a coffee and just look after her for the time that she was here. And at Focus, you know, if you're going to see someone every day for like seven days, you kind of get to know them a little bit. And actually, Alex was, Alex was really kind to me. And she was just so easy to look after. And um, one day, I remember the day, um, there was a seminar that Alex was supposed to speak at. It was on the 27th of July, 2019. Alex was giving a seminar in the big top on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I was quite proud of myself because I'd gotten Alex to the big top at two o'clock and the seminar was starting at 2.30. And I said, hey, Alex, we've got time for a coffee. Do you want me to make you a coffee? And she was like, yeah, great. So we at the back of the big top 10, and I'm just on the Nespresso machine pressing the button, you know, and Alex turns to me. She says, Catherine, the Lord has really put you on my heart today. In fact, I thought of you as soon as I woke up. And I said, oh, really? Just kind of pressing <laughs> the button. And she said, yeah, I, I think God wants to give you a gift today. And I said, oh. Okay. And uh, I said, we've got 30 minutes. So she goes, she was like, oh, uh, 
can I pray for you? And I said, oh, okay, like, yeah, I've had, it's actually been quite intense. Let's just have a rest before the seminar starts. And so I just kind of sat down with her and she laid a hand on my shoulder and she prayed, come Holy Spirit. And we waited. And at first, I was like, oh, I could just get to rest my legs for a little bit. And I felt this kind of, I just felt peace. I was like, oh, I just feel, I just feel peace. This is good. This is quiet. We can be still. And then I felt, I felt love. I felt God's love. And it was, it was very calm and gradual at first. And then I started to feel God's power. And it's really difficult to describe with words, but I felt this power. And I started to kind of shake a little bit. And as Alex was praying, she, she was just praying exactly that, you know, that I would experience God's love. And then we waited. And then she started praying in tongues. And as she prayed in tongues, something in me just broke. And I started to feel wave after wave after wave of power. And when she spoke in tongues, the most bizarre thing happened because she spoke exactly the same as my grandma used to pray when I was six years old. And it was the first time in over 30 years that I'd heard that exact same tongue. And in my mind, my rational brain was thinking, how is this possible, God? How can my grandma, who's lived in Asia her whole life and doesn't speak a word of English, who died in 2015 at the age of 95, who's never met this woman who was born in Australia and now lives in Nashville, be speaking the same kind of tongue? That just makes no, I can't make rational sense of this. And in that moment, I felt God say, I've known you your whole life. And I have a plan and a purpose for your life. And I am real. And as that happened, I think I just said, Lord, I need you. I can't do this in my own strength. I don't know what the plan or the future holds. I just don't know. But I trust you. And it was that experience that enabled me to trust God. I've heard it said that the Holy Spirit is in you for you. The Holy Spirit is in you for you. But it is on you for others. You know, Jesus is here by the power of his Holy Spirit today. How can we be world changers for Jesus? We listen to the words of Jesus and we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We lay down our plans, our preconceptions and our power. And we live every day enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.